The Bears bring in Colts defensive coordinator Matt Eberflus, which is such a fun name to say. This was interesting, right? Bringing in a defensive coordinator, you... I mean, obviously, we've talked about this in the past. When you didn't have something go correctly, when you went one direction, they went offense with Matt Nagy, and the offense never took off. Never was successful on offense. Uh, Defense has has made that team competitive. Now you've got a, a super a potential superstar quarterback that needs to be developed and you're going to hire a defensive coordinator to be your head coach. I find it a little bit odd with the direction that the NFL is going, and that's not to say that defensive coaches cannot be successful. Obviously they can. We've seen it. But I, this strike you as a little strange. No, mainly because Chicago is a defensive minded team. You know, they, they, no city believes that or embraces that more than Chicago. Okay. They, they have what is wildly known as the greatest team ever assembled in the 85 Bears. That was strictly just a defensive monster True. that nobody will ever be able to replicate again. But mainly because the, a lot of rules have changed and you're not allowed <laughs> to play the way they played, which is, but that's their identity. Right. Okay? And they went with the offensive minded guy last time and it didn't work. And so we see this all the time. You go with the OC. Now we're going to go with the DC. Yeah. And and this so this doesn't surprise me, especially for this city. Uh, we got to be real careful before we call Justin Fields a a, a superstar. Well, that's okay? what I was I saying. Said, a potential I know you said superstar. potential superstar, but he's the same potential superstar that you know Matt Jones is, or or, or Wilson is in, in in New York, or or you know Tua is like these. These guys haven't shown anything to where we think they're going to be superstars. Like his level of superstar is no different than Trey Lance's. Like they were drafted high, and we think they're going to be really good one day. But man, there's a chance they're never really good. I mean, you're you're not wrong there. Uh, I I wonder. I I just I I I wonder about the. He's been the DC for the Colts for uh, the last four seasons, 2018 through now. Uh, before that, he he had only been a coordinator at Missouri back in 2001 through 2008. He, uh, he, he was the Cowboys linebackers coach from 2011 through 2017, and now he's been the D.C. for Frank Reich for quite a while. Colts have had good defenses. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not that he's not qualified to be a coach. I just find it, uh, I found it strange. I found it as a, a strange hire because I'd, I don't even know what the connection is, right? And maybe well, he's have just, to be a connection. He's hiring a guy to do a job. Yeah, he might just be the best guy for the job. Um, we'll Here's see. Here's the deal. I don't have a problem with going and getting somebody new and fresh, okay? Right. Like seeing the same old guys get their hand in a job, you know, at some point in time, you know, you, I mean, what did we do when, when Mike McCarthy got hired? Everybody kind of turned their nose up at it and laughed. Like, come on, really? Like, we're going to look at the talent this team has, and we're going to give it in the hands of McCarthy, and we're going to think this is what we're going to do. Like we all, we all know what you're getting there. True. Okay, so I don't know anything about Hackett. I don't know anything about about Eberflus. I, I, you know, other than what I've seen, and I, I, I'll judge them based on that. But you know, it's it's better than just going and getting another retread that we've already seen True. be a failure somewhere else. True. Uh, the Colts situation there, why Eberflus is there, he was not brought in with Frank Reich. He was hired to be the defensive coordinator under Josh McDaniels. Yeah. And when all that stuff went sideways, uh, the general manager, Chris Ballard, it says, was very persuasive and very strong in his conviction to Reich that Matt was the right guy to be his defense coordinator. And, and he was credited with, uh, it says, instilling an ultra-demanding culture of hustle, discipline, and teamwork that helped turn the Colts from a 4-12 team in 2017 to a 10-6 and playoff team in Frank's first year. Very interesting. So, yeah. we'll see. Uh, obviously, the defenses have been good with the Colts. That's, that's not really been an issue. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.